needs to check your phone. Double check. Glory be to Jesus Christ, our Lord, and glory be to God the Father, our God, and glory be to the Holy Spirit, our leader, God in the now, both now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I welcome you to the service of Pentecost. Today is a very important day in Christian history. Whenever God wants to change history, you hear about fire. You hear about spirit. Without the Holy Ghost, we can do nothing. Without Jesus, we can do nothing. God the Father, whenever human beings need a change in history, they need to move on. They need to do big things. They need to progress, construct, reconstruct. You always hear of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God. Today we pray that the Holy Spirit will fall afresh upon us. We pray that he will fall afresh upon us in a very mighty way so that we can accomplish all that is in our destiny. So let us enter into this service by declaring the great word of David. He said, Our help is in the name of the Lord, who has made the heavens and the earth. Let us pray. Gracious Father, thank you for the gift of Jesus, and thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Bring about a change in human history in the various nations of the world. Bring about progress. In your kingdom on the earth. Start anew with us. Something that, out, that will outlive us. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our God, our Lord, our King, who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and reigns with you also. One God forever and ever. Amen, amen, and amen. I want to thank you that you are able to join us in this wonderful feast sometime tonight at 12 o'clock Eastern. We will be having a vigil to the Holy Ghost. Let us hear the reading from the Psalm. We are listening. Okay. This great and wide sea in which are innumerable teeming things, living things, both small and great. There the ships sail about. There is that Leviathan which you have made to play there. These all wait for you that you may give them their food in due 
We ask that the Holy Spirit will move upon all who are sick to heal, upon all who are looking for a job, let them have it. Anything that people are praying for, we ask that the Holy Spirit will move and that they be created or they be made available to them. Hallelujah. Let us hear the Amen. let us hear Amen. the second reading. John's Gospel. John's Gospel. You shall have, if you were asked to read, you shall have that reading open and waiting. So that when once you are called upon, you start reading at once. Who is reading John's gospel for us? Yeah, I am. It's chapter 15, uh, verses 26 and 27. Okay. When the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, that is the spirit of truth The Lord bless to us the reading from the Psalms and the reading from His Holy Gospel. And thanks be to God and blessed be His name for His most sacred word. Let us hear the reading that is associated with this feast. Act chapter 2. Let's begin to hear the word of the living God. Acts chapter 2. 1 through 22. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, 
heaven. Now when there was a noise abroad, and multitude came together, and were confound, because that every man heard them speaking in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? The Parthians and the Medes, the Elamites, and the dwellers of the Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, Bulgaria, Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Syrian and strangers of Rome, Jews and the Proconsuls, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed, and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking, saying, These men are full of wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my word. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is what, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I shall show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. 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 In the olden times, See, the Holy Spirit did not just show up on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has always shown up, possessed men and women to do mighty deeds. So, this is not the first time that we see one of the priceless gift of God being given to humans. The two most important gifts of God is Jesus and the Holy Ghost. I'm not trying to tell you that the Bible is not important. It's written word. You need it. The blood of Jesus is important. Very, very extremely. His wounds, very important. His name, very important. But all that is in his person. In the olden days, the, the Holy Ghost falls on those who are who serve in the household of God and on the king, the rulers, and the prophets. Those who were prophets became very sophisticated and professional in their trade because they had supernatural revelations and they had the dynamics of the intellectual life. And 
these are all what the Holy Spirit makes available, not just possible. If you want to do very well in any field of your professional life or career, then you need to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. We make the mistake of saying we receive Jesus. That's not a good word for it. It's actually Jesus receiving us. It's actually Jesus taking us, bringing us into the kingdom of his Father. So receiving there has to do with loyalty. You become, you come under his kingdom, under his authority. So whether you tell him to come into your life or not, if you tell him, I want you to be my Messiah, save me. I cannot give to myself spirit and life. I cannot grant myself opportunity to go to heaven while I'm alive. So it's all about opportunity. There are certain things that humans cannot give you. And only Jesus and the Holy Ghost can give you. And these two are the gift from the Father. As to Jesus, if you did not know, Jesus is the gift of the Father and the Holy Ghost to us. You've never heard that being preached. So always that is God who gave us Jesus. Yes, that is true. But not complete truth. Two beings gave us Jesus. The Father and the Holy Ghost. See what Archangel Gabriel, my angel, my Archangel, what he said to Miriam, to Mary, the wife of Joseph, who also had many other kids for Joseph. After the birth of Jesus, the mystery and the secret. Here it is. When she asks how, because Joseph and his family were still paying the bride price and still performing the different ceremonies. But I wonder why they are already living together. When I will begin to expose such things, you will know. Because Mary say, I have not yet started. We are not yet having some uh, affair yet. There are so many things involved in that. And I'm researching that. Why they are living together. When they were not yet married. Or what was it? What was the arrangement? Because we, we have to know this. We should not just bypass it because we want to make Mary to be a virgin. Was Joseph an old man? Was Mary of a younger age? What was the arrangement here? We need to know. You deserve to know the truth. Because a lot of people do not want you to question the Bible. I am from the academic background, but I question the Bible because I want to know the truth so that I can apply it to myself. When Mary asked that question, how can this be? Gabriel, my archangel, said, listen to this so that you know who gave us Jesus also. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, will come upon you. 
and the power of God the Father. The power of God will overshadow you, will take over you. So who made it happen for Jesus to come? And be a baby. The Holy Ghost. Who is it that made his ministry possible? The Holy Ghost. And in many instances, you see angels at work. Who is their leader? <laughs> angels worship Jesus. They worship God the Father. They worship Jesus. So then do you think that they do not worship the Holy Ghost? Angels worship the Holy Ghost. And who is the boss of the angels? Who is their boss? It is the Holy Ghost. Go and read Ezekiel 1. Cherubims go only where the Holy Ghost lead them. You doubt what I'm telling you because you don't hear this in churches or in books. It's because I'm closer to him. I'm very close to heaven. That's why I know this. Because the greatest thing that humans and devils do not want you to know is to know the mysteries and secrets of God. You want to have more examples? Cornelius was praying. The Roman centurion. And one of the angels from the department that my angel, the archangel Gabriel is in charge because when it comes to communication, they are coming from his department. One of those angels came to Cornelius and appeared physically. Don't think that because the cloud look blank. The sky is full of cloud, or stars, or the moon, or the sun. Of course, you should know that the sun that we see is also a star. I hope you know that. We can go back as much as 13 billion of years. The physical planet is 4.4 billion years old. One of the stars of God and of Gabriel appeared to Cornelius and said to him, Your prayers have been heard. Your offerings have been received in heaven. That's what you should know. Even though you give tithes and offerings to our ministry, or even though you send me money, to my mission, for my upkeep, and so on. Because a lot of people, you ask them to give. You, you see, this. there are two kinds of people in, in my ministry. There are those who only give to my ministry. Those are what we call the legal people. People who are legal. They do it because the Bible says so. They are doing it to get back some tax money. Those are legal people. There are people who are also not legal people. But that is the way they were taught. So that's what they follow. They only follow tithes and offerings. Or once in a while, they send money to the ministry. But let me tell you some of the secrets of God that I know. Those who receive heavy miracles are those who love me as a human being, as a person. And those who give to support me as a person. That's where, that's where the secret is. Your almsgiving, Cornelius, has ascended to heaven. God has seen what you are doing. Most of the giving to Jesus 
was to him as a person. I mean, there are people who gave also to his mission and to his business. But people like the women who followed Jesus and the men, the wealthy men who followed Jesus, of course, you all know that Jesus did not mingle with the poor. I hope you know that. He didn't roll with them. He ministered to them, but did not belong to that class. It was people like Gamaliel, Nicodemus, Joseph of Arimathea. There is nothing like a gospel for poor people. The gospel is not for poor and broke people. If you are coming to remain broke and poor, well, you will go to heaven and that's all you will gain. When you hear the Bible says, Jesus came to preach to the poor, that is the old classical language for humble people. Humble people. It doesn't mean people who do not have money. The gospel is not for the arrogant. So that word poor doesn't have anything to do with wealth or money. It has to do with either you are arrogant or you are humble. That's all. And it is for the humble people whom the gospel came for. The Holy Ghost came for. But who are those to move the story and the legacy of Jesus forward. They are the humble and the wealthy. Come and try to prove me wrong and let me show you something here. How many of Jesus' disciples came to bury him? None. Who came to bury him? The wealthy. Who came looking for Jesus on the day of the resurrection? The wealthy. Mary Magdalene. Where did Jesus and his disciples stay and ate the Passover? And where did they stay until today that the Holy Ghost fell on them in a wealthy man's house in the upper room? So stop, stop comforting yourself that to be broke and poor and sick is a very good thing because Jesus, Jesus came for those people. God is for the poor. That is not true. So when the star, angels are called stars. Jesus is called a bright and morning star. When this angel appeared, he said, your offering, your giving, your life of prayers has been seen. Your fasting has been received in heaven. Send men to go. To, so, you see, they are specific. Let them go to so and so place. Peter is staying there in the house of so and so. Send for him. And they and and the angel disappeared. And Cornelius sent for Peter. So you see, it was an angel that appeared to Cornelius and asked for him to send for Peter to come and tell him about Jesus. Every religion is trying to know God. Our religion, God is drawing us to himself through Jesus. Every religion, apart from Christianity, do not know and do not have the fullness of God. They don't. They are limited, very, very limited. So Cornelius was a Jew. He has become a Jewish believer. But he did not know the fullness of the gospel. Just like Paul, Saul of Tarsus, in Cilicia, did not know. And Jesus has to appear to him. Now it was an angel. So first it was an angel that appeared to Cornelius. But as the men from Cornelius were nearing where Peter was, Peter went to pray and entered into a trance. Whenever you enter into the trance, it is by the work of the Holy Ghost always. Real dream, trans vision, work of the Holy Ghost. It was during that trance that he was told by God to associate with everybody of every race and every gender. Don't ask me about people who, who change their, their sex, 
from male to female or female to male. Don't ask me how God is going to judge them. Because when it comes to the spiritual life, there is no male, there is no female. In the world of spirit, I'm not a male, I'm not a female, I'm just a spirit. You too, you are the same way. But for our earthly construction, for our earthly assignments, I'm a male. According to the physical nature. So how God is going to deal with people who change their, their agenda, I have no idea. I have an opinion about that, but that is private. Let's carry on. Well, Peter was coming out of that trance of mingle with everybody. Do ministry with everybody. And stop being a coward. And stop being legalistic. The Holy Ghost came into that room. John 15, Jesus described the Holy Ghost as a he. Some religion described the Holy Ghost as power. The Holy Ghost is not power. The Holy Ghost is not fire. The Holy Ghost is not a dove. He's not a pigeon. He's not a wind. He's not water. He's a person. When he, the Spirit of God, comes. He didn't say when the power comes. Some religion teach you that. Some Christian organization teaches you that. He's a dove. He is this. These are just the different manifestations that he wants, he chooses to manifest. The Holy Spirit can walk into your job. He can walk into your office. He can walk into, into, your, into your house and speak to you audibly like I'm speaking and call you by name. And he called him, Peter, I'm here. There are, you see, before Peter knew, before the owners of the house where Peter was staying, came to knock on Peter door, Peter's door, the Holy Ghost walked into Peter's room where he was praying and said to him, Peter, there are men outside there looking for you. You are to hurry, go out and meet them. For I, the Holy Ghost, have sent them. And the Holy Spirit Stop speaking. And Peter now went outside and saw the men and said to them, I am Peter that you are looking for. Come in and be my guest. And tell me what is the issue. The Holy Spirit, the angels are doing what the Holy Ghost is telling them. The Holy Ghost is doing what Jesus and the Father wants because he is their representative on the earth. He is God in the now, God on earth, because the Trinity never leave their institution or business without one of them watching over it. Since the making of this earth, whether the first time or second time, I don't know how many times this earth has been reconstructed. All we know is from the Bible, it looks like twice. But me, I have, I, I still have something. It looks like if this egg is 4.4 billion years old and the world out there is about 13 billion years old, you can imagine what has been going on. Because it's not God's place to try to educate us about certain things he has done. He only wants us to, uh, to know what is relevant to us. If you start to go beyond that, you start delving into occultic practices and witchcraft of various kinds. So that's why I limit myself to that, except they gave me revelation. Then I go beyond that. And then they will show me places in the Bible where I can infer. Angels are at work in the sky realm on earth. Why? Where the Holy Ghost lead them. That's where angels go. So, let me tell you something. I want you to be kind to the Holy Spirit. Why do I want you to be kind to the Holy Spirit? Because he bears a very big burden. 
The Holy Spirit is bearing the burdens of angels and the Holy Ghost is bearing the burdens of humans. He is the president of the missions of angels. And he is the president of the missions of reborn again spirit filled Christians. Humans. So the Holy Spirit only rolls with angels and with born again spirit filled Christians. You may be born again, that does not guarantee that the Holy Ghost is going to roll with you. Because you must need Him. Just as you did, you wanted Jesus, you should also ask for him. Do not ask God for Jesus when you are not willing to have all that is of Jesus, including his benefits and privileges. Why do you want to be born again when you do not want to have what Jesus has? When you do not want to operate like Jesus operates? When you do not want to manifest like Jesus manifests? Why are you looking for him? Why do you want the Holy Ghost when you don't need the various baptisms that we call the fruit? When you do not want his manifestations and operations and his giftedness and his leadership. You don't want his directions. Why are you looking for him? Why do you want to be baptized? Why do you want to be possessed by him when you do not want him to possess you? When you do not want him to do great things through you? The Holy Ghost is looking for people who he can lead them into real estate so that they can become billionaires for Jesus. He is looking for people to go to the military. People to become the chief of police in their different cities. People to become senators. People in the House of Representatives. People who will become presidents of their nations. Enough of looking for the Holy Ghost in the church because that is why the church is dead. The Holy Ghost is not limited to the church. He is a master logistician. The Holy Ghost is looking for people to go through them into battles. Because when you read the Old Testament, you will always see the children of Israel, including David, want to go to war. He goes to ask God, should I go to this war? Or should I not go to this war? What will be the outcome? You will always see it. And the Holy Ghost took possession of somebody. It could be a priest. It could be a Levite. It could be a prophet. He's not limited to some, to some church folks. I am tired of church folks who want the Holy Ghost inside the church only. I want the Holy Ghost in your place of work so that you'll be promoted. God is interested in your happiness, in your riches, than he's interested in your foolishness, in your confusion, in your suffering. Do you think that God is happy? That you are not happy? God cannot do a great thing for an unhappy person. Sadness is part of the demonic kingdom. Who will inherit of my spirit, says the Lord. Why? So that you can run a kingdom on earth. A consulate, an embassy, a small kingdom of God where you are. See, when you read that story about where Geneva read or where Florence read, John 15, Act chapter 2, you think, oh, they were speaking in tongues so that they can use the speaking in tongues and pray to God. Yes, they received a prayer language, but they received more. More than a prayer language. They received the ability to speak it languages that they did not go to school to learn. That's what is happening there. 
It's not that they were just speaking in tongues. They were just blaring about certain things. There are different kinds of tongues. There are groaning tongues. There are language tongues that are real languages spoken into this world. I don't know how to speak Chinese. I cannot understand Chinese. But when I meet a Chinese person, then the spirit possesses me and I begin to speak Chinese with a Chinese person who do not understand English. That's what was happening. Galileans, people from Galilee, were speaking languages of the different Jewish people who, you know that the Jewish people live in different countries. Those countries are the languages that they had been spoken. The Holy Ghost is primarily the spirit of the church, the spirit of mission, and is also the spirit for professional people, for housewives. No matter what you are doing, you need the Holy Ghost in order for you to do it very, very well. He gives you supernatural intelligence to do natural things. Please write that down. The Holy Ghost gives you supernatural ability to do natural things successfully. The Holy Ghost will give you supernatural ability for you to create new things, to bring about new things in medicine, in science and technology, in new ways of making money. When I say making money, I do not ask you to go and print money. I'm talking about of business. Go and read Judges chapter 20 and you will see the children of Israel got defeated two times. Second time that they did the right thing, the Holy Ghost came into action and they now know how to do that thing easily. God has shown me within the last one month that many of you are toiling. Many of you are toiling, including me. I don't have anybody who is doing ministry with me like a family. I don't have ministry partners who are into ministry with me. What I mean by that is who are taking some of the burdens, not people that you give a few years ago, Geneva and I, we gave some of you responsibility for you to be. Many could not be. For some, they wanted to do it their way. They didn't want to take leadership from me. Because if you are going to join me in ministry, you are going to take leadership from me. If you don't like it, then you quit. Because I carry the revelation. I carry the mandate, not you. It's just like you are going to go and work for somebody in a job that you did not start. A job that belonged to somebody else. Including government of your nation. You're going to do it their way. Why? They wrote it and they employed you. And so whether you are doing that thing as a volunteer, whether you are doing it as, a, as something you are being paid, you are going to listen to how it's supposed to be done. But there are people who find it very difficult to take instruction. And that's why many of them are not in their jobs. Because they cannot take instruction. You go to somewhere, you want to be a leader. If you want to be a leader, go and start your own thing. Good leaders learn under somebody else. Paul said in his defense, go and read the Acts. He said, I studied under the feet of Gamaliel. And go and see who Gamaliel was. Gamaliel was the one who stood up in the Sanhedrin and said to them, be careful what you do with these people who are the followers of Jesus. Be careful what you are doing with them. Because you may be walking against God. He was speaking to his fellow wealthy Jewish leaders. Be careful what you do with this man. Because you may end up attacking God and you will incur judgment against yourself. That's a man who knew Jesus. Who feared him. Who worshipped him secretly. People like that are Nicodemus.
The religion that you found yourself in or you came into is not a joke. It's a very serious thing. Because God want to build a business and institution that will last forever through you. I don't want to just go through the earth and then one day I'm recalled and I turn around. There are things I didn't do that I should have done. Luxuries I didn't attend. People I didn't bring to the Lord. People I did not bring to the Holy Ghost. People that I should have led them into starting multi-million and multi-billion dollar businesses. And I allowed them to play it cool. Please listen to me tonight. The religion of Jesus is a religion of the Holy Ghost. I want you to begin to take your religion very, very serious. It worked for the past, for people in the Old Testament. When the Holy Ghost came upon them, they, were, they won battles. They built kingdoms. Why shouldn't it work for you who has the fullness of the Holy Ghost? They didn't have the completeness of the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament and they did mighty things. We are entering into a time that we are to stop toiling, suffering, struggling, I'm looking for people who are going to take this thing serious. And not people that, when Geneva and I, we give them responsibility, they are like, you know, there are many of you are crying, like, why not give us rest? We want to be the yoke with you. When once you give it to them, they fall apart. They, you never see them. They're wrong. Many people left the ministry because they were told to just, just answer phone calls. They did it for one day. And they were, they were, they, they were like, wow, I didn't know this is what you do. Because many of you think that this is just what I'm doing out of my house. No. This is something that I'm doing that is affecting the entire world. The money that we need today, if we have it, we'll move out. Churches will begin. Many things will just take root. And at that time, it's going to be even very difficult because the office will no longer be here. And it's going to be difficult for you to reach me. Except something is absolutely important, you won't hear me return your call because I don't want to die before my time. Because many people ask me, what do you do in a day? Go and ask Geneva. I gave Geneva a phone. I said, answer phone call, baby. She did it two days. She said, I don't, I don't believe this. Even her herself couldn't handle it. It was too much. You are dealing with all kinds of people. Crazy, ugly, good people, bad people. People who will challenge you. She couldn't take it. She said, it's only you who can handle this. I can't. I would rather take payment. <laughs> mm. Before you start walking with us, you are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost that goes with the kind of thing you want to do with us. Now I'm going to pray with you so that you're going to for those of you who have children, I'm very, very careful not to give you too much. Even if you want to do a whole lot for us, I've been avoiding not to give you much. If you have children, I won't. I'll only play by the ear. I'll only go as the Spirit leads me so that you don't break down. You need 90% you need of your time with your children. Your children come first. The chimera doesn't come first. 
I'm just being very plain to you. Some pastors don't think that way, but that is how I think. Your children, your husband, your family members, your sibling, they come first, not me, not my ministry. If you want to make my ministry to come first, I will tell you no. Your family come first. Your children come first. I come last. That's just the way it is. Other pastors want, want them to come first. Make sure your children are well fed. They are well clothed. They have enough cereal for their breakfast. Enough gas in the car for you to take them around. Good shoes for their feet. Good pants on their butt and a shirt on their back. Don't try to give it to me while you are suffering and your children. I'm not going to accept such money. I would rather die of hunger than accept money that is blood money because those, is what, those, those are what we call blood money. And that's why a lot of pastors are under judgment because they've received blood money. Money that a, 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 a man or a woman should have used to buy a new car, their car has run down, is not working, and they are riding a bus, you are receiving such money. I'm not going to use no blood money that you've worked hard for. I'll put it, if you insist in giving it to me, I'm going to put it in the bank. So that when you have trouble, I have that money ready. That's where I'm different. The reason is that I did not come to ministry to come and look for money. I wanted to be a soldier or I wanted to end up being a high court, a Supreme Court judge. That was my interest in life. So that's why if God failed to give me what I want in life, then heaven will not contain him and I. Because I'm going there for war. Because he has to give me what I should have gotten from my profession. And that's just the way it is. And he better. I'm in business. He better. Whenever a deity, a divinity, a god, a god, a stop a human being from what they wanted to pursue. And he said, come and save me. They always give them more than what they would have gotten in the other profession. I didn't even know that until recently. Because when God called me, I didn't. When he chose me, when, when he said I should come and follow him, this is what he wanted to do with me. He wanted me to be a shepherd prophet. I did not know that I should have asked him for specifics. By then I was too young. But nowadays, I'm asking for specifics. And that's what you should do. This Galilean could not reach the Jews who speak, all this, who live in all these countries. So that's why God, the Holy Ghost, gave them special abilities to speak the languages of those people. You need special abilities. Professional abilities. Spiritual ability is not just what you use to pray and to dream and have trance. No. It's you were not good at science. But you say, God, I'm going to be a medical doctor so that I can care for people on your behalf. So make me smart in science. And overnight, your mind is increased in those subjects. And you end up becoming a surgeon for him. That's why you have the Holy Ghost. Lord, I'm not good at mathematics. I don't know how to do geometry. But if you increase my capacity for love of it. And to be wired for it. And to have a passion for it. Then I'm going to be a banker for you. And I'm going to have my own bank for you. And God comes through. Go and ask the lady that we call riches. Go and ask Geneva. Go and ask them. What has happened to their children? I asked them to pray along this way. And it's like their children were wired overnight. 
towards those subjects. And those are just two people who allows me to say it. Because there are so many other people that want to keep it private. And I keep it as a vow. Never will I say it. And their children have gone on to become different, different. Some are captains in their military. Some are colonels. Some are brigadiers. Some are pilots. Just two nights ago, around two o'clock midnight, the Holy Ghost asked me to sit and wait. Two people are going to call me. Somebody called me, and the Holy Ghost cured the person of mental illness. Just happened two nights ago. Another one called me and has been healed of all fears and anxiety and confusion and panic attack. Gone. The reason for the Holy Ghost is to make life easy for you. Speaking in tongues is one thing, but there is a bigger part of the Holy Ghost to make life easy for you and your family and your children. To make life easy for your nation if they are willing to listen. To make you and your nation prosper if they are willing to listen. Because the work of the Holy Ghost is to give direction. To pour supernatural intelligence upon you that no human being is capable of giving to you. Everybody has deceived you, denied you, rejected you, abandoned you. And the Holy Ghost comes in and gives you Jesus. And then gives you the gift of himself. And dust you up. And pick you back up. And there you go. Many of you think that by marriage, by, by getting into relationship, that you're going to prosper. You are joking. You will be on Facebook till you die. You will be doing man and woman or woman and man or whatever relationship till you die. You won't have no money. Nothing to show. And the women will keep deceiving you. The men will keep deceiving you until you grow gray and brown and die. Because the main thing is with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost has been given to you. And you do not want to go to him for what you need. You want to go to a man. You want to go to a woman? Shame on you that you have God on earth called the Holy Ghost and you cannot go to him for what you need. How many times are people going to deceive you? You are still fighting over men, over women. Shame on you. Many of you want to use marriage to become somebody. Your name is not Harry, or your name is not Megan. Every one of you are clapping for them. I do too. Okay, that they have the guts to break boundaries. But life is going to test them. So while you guys are clapping, I am not clapping for them. Reason is, I have seen it come and go. They are not the first. So that's why when I see a big wedding, I stand far away and watch. I don't clap. I don't even look. I didn't watch it. I'm not interested. It might work one way. It might work because Harry, he has seen enough problems. He's seen his mother died because of relationship. You want to be a princess? You want to be a prince? Good luck. I'm already a prince of the Most High God, a very big one for that matter. <laughs> you can spend a billion dollars and do a wedding. It doesn't mean nothing. Because after wedding comes marriage. <laughs> Have you heard that one before? After wedding comes marriage. They will start the real thing. This one is ceremony. Everything you saw was ceremony. They are now going to do marriage. It is in the pot of marriage when life and nature and people and forces will use that long spoon and start to stay up the soup. Start to stay it up. <laughs> then the stuff begin to flow up. That's when we will know. 
whether they mean business. Right now, it's love. <laughs> love is in the air. The moon is in the honey. The honey is in the moon. Until the bees come and take the honey away. And the moon is left without no honey. And then you will need to go and join the, the colony of the bees to make some honey. In order to keep the moon. And keep the honey moon flowing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's how it goes. Well, they are they are going to do what they have to do. They have to go and make the honey in order to keep the honeymoon going. If not, they won't have any moon and they won't have any honey. And all they will have is a raw but naked sunshine beating down on them. And then everyone begins to complain and blame each other. <laughs> Let's give them some time. Let them start marriage. Woo. But if they are smart and they have sought counsel of the Holy Ghost, they have sick, wise counsel. They will know that what they are entering into is a full-time job. Marriage is, is not a joke. It's a full-time job. And you must be prepared for it. It's a full-time job. It's not a joke. <laughs> That's why smart people, they do it quietly. So that if it does not work, they separate quietly. You heard what Joseph wanted to do with Mary. Well, I don't know who made this woman pregnant. I'm just going to go as quiet as I can. And then the angel came and said, oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. This is of the Holy Ghost. This is where I want to stop today. I am praying for you that you are going to come under a very unction very heavy anointing so that you will begin to do very big things for God. Please stop telling yourself that all you want to do is just live quietly. You don't want no trouble. You just want a small life and you just go. The Holy Ghost has been sent to you on this day of Pentecost so that you can do greater things. That's what Jesus said. Greater things shall ye do. Why? Because of the Holy Ghost. Wherever the Holy Ghost is, there is miracle. I want you to stop toiling. I want you to begin to live in the atmosphere of miracles. I don't care whether it's small miracle or big miracle. I want you to live in the atmosphere of miracles every day of your life. I don't want it to only happen on conference calls, or on crusade grounds, or with a particular man of God who carries this anointing of miracles. I don't want that. It, it wasn't like that in the Old, in the Old Testament or in the New Testament. I want when you open your mouth, and talk to the Holy Ghost, he comes through. I asked that this Pentecost of 2018 will be the beginning of a change of history. When things come together for you, whereby the power of God come upon you and never leaves you. Yay! This is what the sovereign Lord said. And upon my handmaiden, and upon my sons and daughters, I will begin to pour afresh on you of my spirit. 
Many of you have received that wine a little bit. But I am going to pour upon you the heaviness of my spirit. My presence shall go before thee. And there is nothing that you ask of me that of my spirit will not be given to you, says the Lord of hosts. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and do great things through you. Every day of your life, let the one whose color is red, the Holy Ghost, lead you in the path of greatness. Let no human being hide your assignment. Let no human being disturb your destiny anymore. For God says the Holy One, where you were clothed with darkness, I have poured my light upon you. Where people took you and shackled you, I have destroyed bondage from your life. Where toil upon toil for generations has existed, I have broken the spirit of toiling. And my spirit shall lead the way from now and forevermore. Things that has been in waiting of the Spirit has been told to release themselves to you. Amen. When, when I'm ministering like this, and prophecies mingle with what we are doing, then I do not need to do any more. Please, the service you were told to come for, for the vigil, this has overtaken it. So please do not come to that service. Go and enjoy this feast. Spend time with the Holy Spirit on your own. And tell him how much you care about the work that he's doing. And tell him that you love him. Tell him to use you. Tell him that you are here for something big. And you want to do it. You do not want to die before your time. Tell him to expose everyone who have been attacking you. And remove them from your life. And that whatever has made life hard for you. That he shall carry you away from there and plant you where enjoyment is for you. And any mistake you have made, plead the blood to wipe it out. And ask the Holy Ghost, I want to be your woman. I want to be your man. Good night. I will see you beginning on Monday at the This Is Your Lock and the daily prayers. I mean, if I do not travel tomorrow. I want to thank you, please, after this service, do not try to reach me. Go and talk to the Holy Ghost about your life. God be with you. Good night. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Good night. I have a good night. What is the question? Well, we still have a 12 o'clock service. Victoria, give her the answer. No, this is, uh, there's no more service tonight. This will be now. Okay, you need them? Okay, yes, I hear you.